given x follows a normal distribution with mu and sigma square estimate mu and sigma square using maximum likelihood estimation so we are asked to estimate the mean and the variance for more on this you need to subscribe to this channel this question has really been a challenge for students so let us write out the normal distribution first the normal distribution is defined as mean sigma squared is equal to 1 all over square root of 2 pi sigma squared exponential negative x i minus mu all over 2 sigma squared. So this is the normal distribution and we are asked to find the mean and the variance. What do we do? The first thing to do is to take the likelihood function. And the likelihood function is given as the product, sorry, the product sum, the product sum of any function. So we are not taking the likelihood function or the product sum of this normal distribution. So this is the likelihood function. The likelihood function or the product sum of this distribution can be written as 1 all over, since this is a constant, we get 2 pi sigma squared all over raised to the power of n exponential negative summation xi minus mu raised to the power of 2 2 sigma squared so this is what we get nothing has changed the next thing to do when finding the maximum likelihood estimation is to take the log but before we take the log we need to rearrange this so that we can be able to take the log. So to rearrange, we get something like two, we can split this to give us n all over two multiplied by sigma squared raised to the power negative n all over two exponential summation of xi minus mu raised to the power of 2 all over 2 sigma squared so this is still our likelihood function the next thing to do is to take log take log we'll take log of these functions so taking the log of this function we get log l f x mu sigma squared is equal to to take the log of this we get negative n all over 2 log 2 pi if we take the log of this it's supposed to be plus but because of this sign we we'll have negative n all over 2 log sigma squared if we also take the log of this we we'll have negative summation xi minus mu all over 2 sigma squared raised to the power of 2. So we have succeeded in taking the law. The next thing to do, we can take this as our equation star because we we'll refer to it when looking for the sigma square. The next thing to do is to differentiate with respect to mean. And also differentiating with respect to sigma square to get the mean and the variance. So first, we differentiate. Differentiate with respect to mu. If we differentiate with respect to mu, we get differential of log. this mu 
is equal to so when we differentiate this function what do we get if we differentiate the whole of this we notice that there is no function like mu here so this turns to zero if we also differentiate this there is no mu here it turns to zero if we differentiate this we get two summation xi minus mu all over 2 sigma square. We also differentiate what is inside, which will give us multiplied by negative 1. Because if we differentiate mu, which is a constant, we get 1. So since there is a negative sign here, we put negative 1. So it means that we will now equate the whole of this to 0. So equating to 0, equating to 0. We have this, this, if it comes here, we have 2 summation xi mu all over 2 sigma squared is equal to 0. Of course, this can cancel this. So, we just say cross multiply. Cross multiply if we cross multiply this will multiply this to give us zero so we'll be left with summation of xi minus mean is equal to zero so we we'll take the sum if we sum x we we'll get summation of xi if we sum mu which is a constant we we'll get n mu which is equal to zero we can take this over to this side so we we'll have summation of xi is equal to n mu. It means that our mu estimate is equal to summation of xi all over n. If we divide both sides by n, we get this. And we all know that this is equal to mu. So therefore, our mu is equal to x bar. We have succeeded in obtaining the mean. Now, we are to obtain the variance. So we come over to this side. Let's come over to this side to obtain our variance. Now, to obtain sigma square, which is our variance, we recall from equation star. So, from equation star, which is this, the whole of this, all we need to do is just to differentiate with respect to the variance or sigma square. So from equation star, we can differentiate with respect to sigma square. So we have something like this x mu sigma square all over sigma square. So now if we differentiate with respect to sigma squared here, of course we get zero because there is no value for sigma squared here no function like that here yeah, so we have zero now if we also differentiate with respect to sigma squared here we'll get n all over two sigma squared then the next one is this to so differentiate with respect to sigma squared of course if we see this function we cannot differentiate immediately the next thing to do is to use the quotient rule of differentiation. The quotient rule which states that V, the U all over the sigma squared minus, sorry, V, the U all over the sigma squared minus U, 
the V all over the sigma squared because we are differentiating with respect to sigma squared all over V squared. Of course, if we write this out, we'll see that we'll have Xi minus mu all squared all over 2 sigma squared. So we we'll take this as our U and we we'll take this as our V. So if we differentiate this using this concept, we get something like to be equal to V. Let's put our V. This is V. We have 2 sigma squared. The U all over the sigma squared, there is no value or function for sigma squared here. So we have 0 minus. Now, we use U, this U. This is our U. We put U here. Summation of xi minus mu all squared and the v all over the sigma squared so we are differentiating this the whole of this is a constant if you differentiate two and the constant you get two so you have two here all over this is two sigma squared so all over two sigma squared here so it means that if we rearrange this we get our value for this time this is zero we also have this as our negative two sigma x i minus mu all squared all over four sigma four so this will cancel this to give us negative summation x i minus mu all squared all over 2 sigma 4. So this is what we got, and we'll put it here. So since we have a negative sign here, we have a negative sign here, the whole of this we got is negative summation xi minus mu all squared all over 2 sigma raised to the power of 4. So this is what we got. The next thing we do is to equate to 0. So Equate to zero. If we equate to zero, we get that means this multiplied by this will give us a positive sign. So we have negative n all over two sigma squared plus summation of xi minus mu all squared all over 2 sigma raised to the power of 4 is equal to 0. So we can push this over to this side which is n all over 2 sigma squared is equal to negative summation xi minus mu all squared all over 2 sigma 4. So this will cancel this. The next thing we do is to cross multiply. We cross multiply. We come over to this side again. We cross multiply. So if we cross multiply, we get this will go over to this place and this will come over to this place. That's it. So we have two sigma four all over two sigma two is equal to summation of xi minus mu all squared all over n we cross multiply this is all again so two will cancel this this sigma will cancel this to give us sigma squared to be equal to summation of xi minus mu raised to the power of two all over n so if we square both sides square both sides 
we have sigma estimates to be equal to the square root of summation of xi minus mu all squared all over n. So this becomes our estimate for sigma. This becomes our estimate. So that is how we can obtain the mean and the variance for the normal distribution. So for more on this, you need to subscribe to this channel.